You were on uh, Get Up With Me pretty much all summer long, and there were two things I've heard you talk about at length that I think you had dead right. Let's start with the more interesting one. You, before the draft, were the only person who was saying that if you had the first pick of all the quarterbacks, you would have taken Justin Herbert. And a lot of, I will admit that a lot of us were sort of mocking that idea and there were a lot, there were a lot of rolled eyes and all that kind of stuff. Right this minute, you look awfully good. What did you see in him and what have you seen so far? You know, Greeny, it's pretty easy for me. It's talent and character. This guy has impeccable character, four-year starter. He was a TA as an undergrad. He, his intelligence is off the charts, but put that aside. This guy is Ben Roethlisberger. People don't understand how big he is. And if you watch the Wisconsin game, the Rose Bowl in particular, he made people miss athletically, and he ran people over. And then you go to the offseason, Senior Bowl Combine. He showed up for everything. He was the best player. He threw it flawlessly in Indy with receivers he had never been around. And, I, and I'm guilty of this too, Greeny, which is we have this East Coast bias where – we live on the East Coast, a lot of eyeballs are here, and we watch Alabama, we watch the SEC, and I'm just telling you, if everyone went through the process open-minded and just judged Justin Herbert as the player, it was pretty, I wouldn't say an easy decision, but it was a very apparent one to me because he was physical and he had great intangibles. So, look, we have a million miles to go, but what I'm seeing now is really what I saw at Oregon. Yes, he, he has been brilliant, and Maybe the Dolphins will wind up regretting taking Tua ahead of him. I wonder if Washington right now regrets taking Chase Young at number two, and that's not in any way a value judgment on Young. Young is a terrific young player and is going to be absolutely great on that defensive line for 10 years. But you can't replace the value of a quarterback. They've clearly given up on Dwayne Haskins, and Justin Herbert was sitting there and they didn't take him. Yeah, that's a really good point, Greeny. Until you have a great one, you got to keep looking. Every rock, every day was a saying that we always used to use. And what was interesting to me about Haskins was, if you listen to Ron Rivera carefully, early in the year he said, hey, we're going to go with Haskins. And I had Cam Newton early in my career. We live with the turnovers. It was an investment in his future. And then a couple weeks later, Haskins went from one to three. Kyle Allen and... Alex Smith both moved up, and that was really interesting to me. That said to me that Coach Rivera saw something from an intangible standpoint or a preparation standpoint because to go from one to three said everything we need to know. So I think that's a great observation, Greeny, that clearly they don't know who their quarterback is of the future. Greeny and Mike Tannenbaum with me here. And listen, we all accidentally damage our phones, right? That happens. Well, now Straight Talk Wireless's new Platinum Unlimited plan includes phone protection, just 65 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, data, and more. See mobile protect terms and conditions at Ashurion.com slash straight talk. Limitations and exclusions apply. So that was one you had right, uh, Tannenbaum. You told us all Justin Herbert is the best quarterback in this draft. And right at this moment, it certainly is difficult to argue. The other thing you've been saying for a while, and I, I heard Amy Trask say this as well, that you thought the Bengals were putting too much on Joe Burrow, that they may have mishandled the way they handled him from the very beginning, letting Andy Dalton get away, and now we see what happened yesterday. So, look, it's easy to jump up and down and scream and yell after he tears up his knee. But what were your thoughts on the Burrow situation, and where do you think it goes from here? Agreed. I take no pride in being right on this one, but it was so fundamental to me, which was you cut Andy Dalton in this year of all years, Greeny, no offseason program, no OTAs, no games in the preseason. How would you let Andy Dalton and all that wisdom walk out the door? We saw it firsthand with the Jets. Chad Pennington sat, sat for over two years behind Vinny Testaverde. Patrick Mahomes started one game his rookie year. Why not absorb all that information from Andy Dalton? The Dolphins did it with Ryan Fitzpatrick. The Chargers have done it with Tyrod Taylor. I don't know why they let him walk out the door. Then that's exacerbated by the fact that, as Hembo pointed out, Joe Burrow had 450 dropbacks, number one in the NFL. You have Gio Bernard. You have Joe Mixon. How about having some balance to put him in the best position to be successful? So we all know the offensive line is below average. You don't have to start on opening day. This is a 10-year decision. Joe Burrow could be the face of this franchise for the next 10 years. No one's going back to the Kansas City Chiefs and saying, wow, in 2017, we wish he had played more than one game. They put him in a position to be successful for 10 years, and that's exactly what Cincinnati should have done, and it's completely on them. It's a tragic injury, 
And while maybe that specific injury couldn't have been avoided, he was sacked the third most amount of times. And those cumulative hits are impactful. Just ask Deshaun Watson. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.